While this is the third segment video in Chapter 1, Section 2, The Fundamental Operations of Algebra, I just want you to know that we've already talked about adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational numbers. So really, I want to just try to review the laws of algebra real quickly and then do some work with order of operations. And I'm going to try to do this in one segment. So I'm going to go through the laws fairly quickly. So first of all, in an applied course like ours, I want you to know that I use these words all the time, but I seldom would ask you to repeat these laws. What I really want you to garner or gain from this is that the commutative laws are good for addition and multiplication, not for subtraction and division. And all they say is that the numbers in these two operations can commute or move backwards and forwards and you still get the same answer no matter how you look at it. So the 2 and the 7 for multiplication could be a 7 and a 2 and no matter what you still get 14 either way. Of course that wouldn't work for subtraction because 7 minus 2 is 5 and if you commuted, if you wrote this as 2 minus 7 you get a negative 5 so not good for subtraction, not good for division. The associative laws are also only good for addition and multiplication. And the associative laws are just about the grouping symbols. That's all they're about. They're saying that if you put in a number for a of 2 and for b of 3 and for c of 4, and then on the right side, a of 2, b of 3, C of 4, but knowing that order of operations says that you should do what's in the parentheses first, that you would still get the same thing because the left side will be equal to 9 and so will the right side. That's true for multiplication as well. So the associative law just says that you in a group where you're just adding or just multiplying, you can move the parentheses and get the same results. The distributive law, and this is how you will see it, and I don't think I'm going to bother with doing this with some arithmetic. You'll see the distributive law when I ask you to take a factor later in the semester and distribute it times two or more terms. So later this semester when I ask you to take and distribute 2 times 3x, I'm asking you to take this times this. Well, 2 times 3x is 6x. And then I'm going to ask you to take 2 times 7 and that's 14. So you're going to immediately go and write this as 6x plus 14 and you've gotten rid of the parentheses and you've simplified the expression using the distributive law. Okay, let's talk about order of operations. So order of operations is very important so that the whole world can know that we will do our mathematics in the same way so that all the things that have been created in our world such as computers and planes and rockets and whatever will all, you know, rockets will stay in the sky until we ask them to come down. The planes will stay in the sky. Um, computers will work because we have all decided in our world that order of operations says that you should always do what's in the parentheses first. So you've heard this before. And after you've done that, you should do any exponents in a problem next. Your next step in terms of order of operations is that you should multiply or divide, I'm using the word or on purpose, or divide in a problem but you must work it left to right. So just because I wrote, let me write this, left to right. So just because I wrote here multiply first, it does not mean that when you see a sentence, um, an arithmetic sentence that has a multiplication and division, it doesn't mean that you should multiply first. If division came first, like 24 divided by 2 times Three. So again, this sentence doesn't mean first you multiply, then you divide, because if you first multiplied, you'd get a 6 here, and then you'd go 24 divided by 6. But what I really want you to do is work left to right. So 24 divided by 2 is 12, and 12 times 3 is 36. That's the proper way to do this problem. If you had 
read my statement up here and just said, oh, she wrote multiply first, so I better multiply first. Because, again, you're supposed to work left to right. That's what I did up here. If you did this first, then you would get a different answer, and it's an incorrect answer. I like to sometimes joke with people about, you know, what if this was a calculation in terms of, um, how much medicine you should give me when, I, when I'm in the hospital bed and you're my caretaker. And what if you didn't use order of operations and you calculated that I should get four milligrams because you multiplied instead of working left to right and you would have gotten 36. I may have died because you might not have given me enough medicine at four when I was supposed to get 36. Maybe an anaphylactic reaction to a bee sting or something. So um, this order of operations is extremely important. So let's go ahead and do a few problems. You should pause the video and go ahead and work these um, on your own before I do to see how you're doing. And I'm sorry, there's one last thing I forgot to put here in order of operations. The last step is to add or subtract, but it again too needs to be worked from left to right. Um, and as you know, many people have come up with acronyms for, um, for uh, order of operations. Some people have used the, f the um, can't think of what I want to say right here, but uh, it's called PEMDAS, um, P-E-M-D-A-S. PEMDAS is a way to remember this. Or some people use, let's see if I can fit this here, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, my dear Aunt Sally. And the first letters in this sentence, P and please, goes with parentheses. Excuse is E, M is multiply, my dear is divide, Aunt is A, and Sally is subtract. So please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So, in this problem, there are no parentheses, there are no exponents, there is multiplication and division, specifically there is division. 8 divided by 4 is 2, you must do that first, and then you add, and you get an answer of 22. Watch, if you had done this incorrectly, if you had added 20 and 8 first, because you just thought you should work left to right, you would have gotten 28, and 28 divided by 4 would give you 7. That is incorrect. All right. Um, let's go ahead here, 0 minus this product, so I should multiply this together. So a negative times a negative is a positive, and then I'm going to bring everything down, and now I'm going to work from left to right. So if I have 0 and I take away 48, I'm going to add a negative 48. That gives me a negative 48, and then I add a negative 10, and my total is a negative 58. I actually think I'm going to make uh, the next video um, in a, another segment because I'd like you to turn the page and I'd like you to work on these problems, especially number 6, 7, and 8 can be very challenging and see how you do when I come back.